So let's continue some Dresden Files here today, people. Zach recently read Cold Days, book 14 in the series. Bit chilly. Bit hot and spicy at times, too. Initial thoughts, Zach? Just head shakes. The artist still can't get rid of that damn hat, but at least the gun is pretty accurate to this one. <laughs> that's, that's accurate. Thank you. <laughs> let's talk about this book. Welcome to Fantasy for the Ages, the show where father and son talk about fantasy, science fiction, and other nerdy things we enjoy. This is the second time I've done the intro because I totally screwed it up the first time, which you will never see, ever. Because he edits. I edit. I edited. You'd see it. <laughs> but because I edit, we give you a certain level of quality that we think you'll enjoy. Please hit the like button to tell us that is true. If they don't hit the like button, I guess they want the Zach cut. <laughs> you know what, like anyway. and comment if you want the Zach cut. Ah, there we go. So we are here talking about Cold Days. This is a spoiler light episode. We may reference things from previous books that are spoilers in the series, but Cold Days, we're just giving you a spoiler light. So if you haven't read this one yet, this may give you reasons why you'll want to. So Zach, what'd you think of Cold Days? Really? I liked it better than Ghost Story. No, yeah, that's not hard. Yeah, ghost Ouch. story is a quirky it little story. Like story. Cold um, days. Mm, we got real stuff moving forward again. No, there, there's definitely more to be seen here, especially with trying to see what does winter knighthood look like. Yeah, Harry Dresden is taking some badassery onto himself now. And w what exactly this means and what the limitations are are unclear. But really, Cold Days is an exploration of that and some situations in and a touch on and further reveal into kind of the big bad of the series. Mm -hmm. Clearly not the main singular antagonist of this book. It's not like we deal with that. But even going back to the first book, this mysterious force that is kind of guiding all of the bad things that we're having and we have been like suspecting there's something bigger behind all this something bigger at play it gets acknowledged by people that aren't harry and named but not like names of power so not named named but we are given an actual name to refer to it by from now on yep which is very uh, validating for harry it's kind of like with book 12 and the red vampires moved out of the way now we can move on to the real meat of the Dress and File story. And that's what we're seeing happening, growing bigger in cold days. Uh, we definitely, you mentioned it already, you get to see what does being the winter night mean? And Harry has a concern. You know, is he gonna go bad? This is why he resisted anything like this for so long. And now we're gonna find out, yeah, does it truly change who he is at the core? And ultimately what I'm gonna tell you is we're not gonna find that out in this book in fact we're probably never gonna really find that out maybe who knows but at least in this book we're gonna spend time with harry concerned about whether or not it is and then we're gonna have thoughts and opinions upon whether or not it is and, and it might end I... up being a philosophical existential disagreement between people of does this actually mean he's changed or or not an element I love about this book is we get so much more immersed in the world of the Fae. Mm -hmm. Understanding the Fae courts and all the stuff that's going on there. And even Queen Mab getting yep. more personalized for us. Not just this, this character, but a real engaged element in the narrative. Probably my favorite aspect of broadening this world is actually further discussion and reveal behind one of the members of the senior council of the white council oh yeah now which Seeing, one because there's a few there's one that we learn new big things about in this book in particular the other ones and stuff like it might be addressed or talked okay. about but it's things we learned previously okay i think i know which one you're talking a about. validation of their name yes yes absolutely gotcha and seeing and understanding that brings a cool new perspective and also 
helps us understand how interactions went back in turncoat Mm -hmm. and the conversation that was had with that individual then yes yep (laughs) i laugh more reading these books than anything else i've read i mean laugh out loud moments okay i don't (laughs) i laughed over bedazzled I understand what you're talking about. <laughs> I know what was going on. I don't understand why you had that reaction unless it was just like so it unexpected was, to it you was that mostly, you laughed. Jim Butcher? Oh, no, you didn't. You totally did. <laughs> really? <laughs> Look, at the end That's of the day. That's why I laughed out loud. At the end of the day, the Winter Night Mantle gives Jim Butcher an excuse to write in Spice in a way that Harry is questioning and uncomfortable with, but also more emphasized than what we've had previously. And it's an excuse to be like, it's not just he's a bad guy or something. It's just thoughts. (laughs) And like, on the one hand, I don't always love it. On the other hand, we're at a point where I think he's better about how he's choosing to do some of this writing. Okay. I usually don't mind it that much. I sometimes even can enjoy that he's making these choices as a writer. Uh, Another character that I recall comes back into this story that we've seen here and there throughout, but has a bigger role to play here is Toot Toot. Yep. And I like that character and I like the growth of the character. I like his simp for girlfriend. Oh, yes, absolutely. I love that he views that interaction and situation the way that he does <laughs> but it's also one of those two two you're an idiot yes yes absolutely it's some of the comedy that butcher is slipping into the story yeah oh that was great you really end up hating that one character something to do with a, a hat oh don't no, you not really really Oh, Not man, really. I hated that character. Ugh. I mean, I think I was supposed to hate that character. But no, you didn't feel so. I think that character just kind of is and gives a certain dynamic to what to expect of the complications of the Fae. Okay. Like, I understand why Harry really doesn't like that character. And I understand why some readers would. But I'm more just like, no, they're just like, it's a character who has their own separate things that we need to acknowledge. And... There's more to this than we're seeing. We're being given a very one-dimensional view of this character that is meant to make us hate this character. No. No, that's that's well said. Alternatively, Harry. however, when we talk about not being one-dimensional, can I spoil and talk about Santa Claus? Like, not really spoiling, but Santa Claus? Really? Santa Claus! You gotta wonder, Jim Butcher is sitting there going, how, you know, what else could I surprise people with? More importantly, I think Kringle being around. Makes sense. Talking about how different mantles and different titles, sometimes it's just beings in different positions, but it's the same being kind of thing. And what their mantle means, means different things for them. That Mm -hmm. makes sense. One thing where it's a choice that I've accepted, but I also like, I wouldn't have seen it coming because it doesn't necessarily make logical sense beyond he chose to make this choice is Kringle's other persona being those two are those that persona. Uh huh. It's just like, okay, I'm here for it, but I wouldn't have expected that one necessarily. And there's more to come with that one. There's more to come. That's great. Uh, Harry makes a choice early on in this story to not reconnect with people. That was an interesting decision. We know why. We understand in the story why he chooses that. It's questionable whether that was the right choice or not. Well, I think it makes sense for his character. I also think it's a pretty big flaw because it's a reverting back to I gotta protect Harry. everybody. It's yeah. the I'm the knight who has to try and save everyone else and they're the less capable. I don't want to mix them up in this thing. After he just spent the entire previous book seeing how other people have grown and can do things without him. So let me ask you then, is this an illustration of everybody else has progressed and changed and Harry hasn't? He hasn't kept up. He's still the same Harry, and he needs to do some growing. Parts of him. I think it has more to do 
And again, I see this here. I talked about it when we were talking earlier today in our recordings about completely different books. People sometimes taking the easier choice when it comes to social things and how they interact with people that they care about. And partially in this case, Harry reverting back to the earlier protect people thing and not include them to protect them is a defense mechanism of himself to not go see other people when he thinks he, he himself might be a monster. He doesn't want them to view him that way. He thinks they're okay without him. He's not really like he is doing it for them, but it's partially he's telling himself that he's doing it for them. He's doing it for himself and to save himself the trouble of having that interaction. Especially when we add in the element that was a big part of the two books ago, you know, he's got a kid. Yeah. And his practical terror at facing his child. It's a character flaw in himself. And he's making choices for other people that they deserve to get to choose. Yeah. But this was a good story. I really enjoyed Cold Days. I hope you did. I enjoyed it. I felt bad for the fate of one character just because it felt like they didn't have that long in the position they were in, even though it really was like a decade. But I was okay with how things shook up and the newness going forward. It also was super hinted at one of the other ways it was going to be, a role was going to be filled mm -hmm. later. For the past few books, it had been very hinted at. Yeah, I liked it. I thought it was good. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Something that we haven't talked about at all, but was really relevant a few books back. But, you know, we've got Marcone out here. Still it still messes with me that you say Marcone. Because it's, it's good old Johnny Marconi. And maybe that's how I should say it. But he's a Chicago gangster type. You got to make him like Italian or something. Have you listened to the audiobook? No. <laughs> me neither. So I think it's Marcone. But anyways... Uh, people, put it in the comments. Which way are we supposed to be saying this if you listen to the audiobook? That's a character that continues to have appeal and interest in, in interesting ways. And got to keep an eye on the gangsta. I mean, while we do have to keep an eye on him, and he's a valid character, and he'll continue to do interesting things, I won't be sad when he's gone. <laughs> you want him erased from the board. Like, I don't need him gone. But every time he comes up, it's usually something where it's like, this is just going to make things a mess. <laughs> All right. Anything else you want to say about cold days? Nah. Okay. That's where we'll stop. Thanks for watching, everyone. Talk to you next time.